meeting 2021. I will go. Welcome, children and online viewers. Today, primary B class has lined up a parable, Bible hero, and an amazing science experience, as we also enjoy wonderful music in the praise junction. As I go, let us all go. Go, tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go, tell it on the mountain, that Jesus Boys and girls, I would like to invite you to another segment. I, I will go. My name is Amy, and with me is Valencia. Let's pray. Our kind and loving Father, thank you. thank you for the blessings we have. Thank you for the gift of life. Thank you for the privilege that we have to come and teach the little children here. Please help us to learn and also help the children to join in to class early so that they can learn. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Today's story is titled, Go to the Highways and Byways. It comes from Luke 13, 12 to 24. Our theme verse comes from 2 Timothy 4, verse 5, which says, But if you want to end your afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, fulfill your ministry. The Savior was a guest at the feast of a family. He accepted invitations from the rich as well as the poor according to his custom. He linked the scene before with the lessons of truth. Blessed is he who shall eat bread in the kingdom of God, were the words that came out of the mouth of his neighbor at the table. A certain man gave a great dinner and invited many and told his servants to go and call those who are ready. Come, for all things are now ready, but they all had excuses. The first one said, I have bought a piece of land and I must go and see it. I ask you to have me excused. Another said, I have bought five yoke of oxen and I am going to test them. I ask you to have me excused. Still, another said, I have married a wife and therefore I cannot come. The servant came and reported this to the master. My master was angry and told him to go quickly into the streets and lanes and bring the poor, disabled, and blind. Master, it is done as you commanded, but there is still room. Okay, now go to the highways and edges and ask anyone you find to come in. For I say to you, those, who, those men who are invited will never taste my delicious dinner. What? Who refuses good food? Let's take a look back to see what made them refuse to go and what all of this means. The great feast, at, the sacred feast among the Jews was connected with all their seasons of national and religious rejoicing. The great feast at which the Jews are to sit down with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, while the Gentiles stood without anything and looked with loving eyes, was a theme on which they were A lesson of true hospitality and a, in this, they forgot the instruction handed to them from God through Moses. The neighbor, the stranger, the fatherless and the widow within the gate shall come and eat and be satisfied. A lesson of true hospitality and a wider lesson of spiritual blessings given to Israel were not for themselves alone. For the Pharisee who spoke to Christ, his words were distasteful. He spoke of great assurance as if he himself was certain of a place in the kingdom of God. Jesus told them the story to remind them of their duty to God. The duty was not to only do good and be good, but to break the bread of life to everyone that God provided. With this, we see that in the story, the master represents God. He even prepared diligently and called everyone when he was ready. With this, we see that in the story, the master represents God. He prepared diligently and even called them when he was ready. Well, the story goes on, we see the beloved people of Israel were given the task of telling the truth that everyone should know. None of these excuses were found on a real necessity. The man who needed to go and see his piece of ground had already purchased it. His hurry to go and see it was due to the fact that his interest was absorbed in his purchase. Looking at this man, he represents many who get stuck in their successes such as buying land, excelling School, being the best in sports, being the best singer, and so on. They relax in their own glory, forgetting God and the 
duties he entrusted on us. The Israelites had the same problem too. For example, the rich young man wanted to follow Christ, but when he was told to give away all his wealth in order to follow him, he found he was unable to. The next guest had bought oxen and wanted to test them. And wanted to test them. The last guest gave an excuse with no more resemblance for reason. The fact that the intended guest had married a wife need not have prevented his presence at the feast. His wife would have also been made welcome. But he had his own plans for enjoyment. But and this seemed to him more desirable than the feast he had promised to attend. Than the feast he had promised to attend. He learned to find more pleasure in the society than of the, than of their host. None of these excuses were found on a real necessity. No. The master got angry and focused on the poor and hungry. These people represented the rejected group of the Israelites, which included the prostitutes and bartenders. When the master sent the servant disciples to go to the Gentiles. Lastly, lastly, those who stand in high social positions are rarely addressed personally regarding the interests of the soul. If you saw a man rushing, if you saw a man drowning, stand by and watch him perish just because he was a lawyer, a teacher, or a hawker. If you saw persons rushing down a cliff, you would not hesitate to pull them back just be whatever their calling or position might be. Neither should we hesitate to warn men of the danger of losing their souls. Boys and girls, stand up, be brave, be bold, for the Lord has called us to share the gospel to the highways and byways that everyone should know. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain, that Jesus sooner will come. Let's pray. Our and loving Father, thank you for teaching us. And remember what Amen. Until next time, bye. Welcome to the Museum of Lost Artifacts. And our theme is I will go. And what's our memory verse? Our memory verse comes from Psalms 26, verse 6, which says, he who continually goes for sleeping, bearing seeds for sowing, shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. Let us pray. Thank God for taking us during this day. Make it to be a good day and a good life for everyone. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. Welcome, boys and girls. My name is Tisha Betty, and today I have my fellow presenters with me. We have Sifa Yamwea, Joseph Musili, and Chichi Kotu. All from primary B class, and today we have items from a story we all know the story of a father of faith. If he were here today, he would have probably been confused for a superhero. Is that true? True, he survived there, he saw the future, interpreted dreams, and understood a very strange language. The only thing left was a cape and a suit. <laughs> Okay, hold on boys and girls, let us not go off topic because our superhero was an ordinary man, just like you and me, and he was called by God to do his work. His name was Daniel, also known as Belteshazzar. Did you get that right? His name was D-A-N-I-E-L. -E Daniel, that's right. Now, Chichi, I see you have brought something with you. What is this? This is a plate full of rice cakes and nuts. And why did you bring it? It brings me to the beginning when Babylon captured the children of Israel and among them was Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. The king at that time requested the best of the best to teach the language of Chaldeans so that they could hold a position in his kingdom. What were they given? They were given meat and wine, fit for a king for three years, but Daniel decided not to eat any of that food. We told the Inuit, the Inuit was not very happy because he knew if the king knew about this, they can be killed because of not following the king's orders. So what did Daniel request? Daniel requested if he could take 10 days 
of eating cereal and water to drink. Melza agreed. Now, boys and girls, at the end of the 10 days trial, the results were the opposite of the prince's fears. The Hebrew boys were stronger than all the others. As a result, Daniel and his friends were allowed to continue their simple diet during the entire course. So how is this all related to the theme, I will go? Well, boys and girls, Daniel and his friends were men who would honor God. So when they were given meat that was given to idols, they refused and they continued their simple diet of cereal and water. Now, Sifa, I see you have brought something with you here, a pillow. Are you planning to sleep here today? No, here is another instance where Daniel was called to go. This took place soon after Daniel and his friends entered the service of the king of Babylon. Oh, I get it. King Nebuchadnezzar, he had an amazing dream that woke him up. Filled with... In amazement. What in amazement, the magicians, the astrologers, the wise men, the astrologers were called to the king to tell the king the, his dream and its interpretation. But he just start, but they just started praising the king. The king was not happy with the way they were answering him, so he just thought they were liars who could not even help him with a simple dream. Then what happened next? What did the king promise to do if they could not answer the dream? So the king promised his wise men wealth and honor if they told him his dream, but death if they did not tell him his dream and its interpretation. But imagine the wise men, they came back with the same answers as before, and this made King Nebuchadnezzar so angry, so he declared in a loud voice, If you did not make known the dream to me, there is only one law for you, for you have agreed to speak lying and corrupt words before me, till the time has changed. Therefore, tell me the dream, and I shall know that you can tell me its interpretation. What did they do, filled in fear? Filled with fear, the magicians wanted to show the king that his request was unreasonable for any man to achieve. This made the king more angry and furious, and promised to destroy all the wise men of Babylon. Yes, so Daniel in counsel and wisdom, he spoke to Ariok, the captain of the king's guard, and he told Ariok, why is the king so angry, and why has he decided to destroy all the wise men of Babylon? So Daniel knew he had to do something. He requested to see the king so he can ask for more time. Now, children, Daniel was being very brave because he knew the king could order him to be killed right there and then. But you know what? Daniel knew that God was always with him. Then what happened next? What did Ariok do? So Ariok went to so Ariok went to the king and went so Ariok went to the went to Daniel and Daniel went to the, the king. Daniel asked the king if he could be given one more day so he can pray to God to reveal the dream and its interpretation. The king agreed. Daniel was so happy and excited. He wanted to tell his house and friends, and they knew if they pray for wisdom and knowledge, God will answer. So they started praying. That night in a vision, God relieved the king's dream and its meaning. Daniel's first act was to thank God for revealing the dream and its interpretation. And immediately, Daniel went to Ariot and told him, Do not destroy the wise men of Babylon. Take me to the king. I know the dream. Ariot ran to the king and told him, I have found a man who can tell you a dream. Ariok brought Daniel in who was calm and confident. The king asked him, Is it true you can tell me a dream and its interpretation? Your Highness, Daniel replied, There is no wise man, no magician, no astrologer who can interpret your dream except God who will show you your future in your later days through your dream. Daniel continued and described the dream as follows. He saw an image whose head was of fine gold, his breast and his arms of silver, his belly and his thighs of bronze, his legs of iron, his feet part of iron, part of clay. He watched while the stone was cut out without hand and struck the image on its feet, part of iron, part of clay, and broke them in pieces. Then the iron, the clay, the bronze, the silver, the gold were crushed together and became like dust summer thre threshing floors. The wind carried the pieces away so that no trace can be found. And the stone that was struck became a great mountain and filled the whole earth. Oh yes it was. He was indeed shocked. But what did the dream mean? 
Now children at home, my assistants here will help us to interpret, interpret the dream because all the metallic parts of the image, as you will be shown in the screen, represented kingdoms. You're right, teacher Betty. The, the kingdom of heaven... Shall be given? The kingdom of heaven shall be given... Okay, so children, we shall help you to interpret the dream. The first, the head of the image was made of what, Chichi? The head was of what? The gold. head was of gold. Yes. Wow, what an, what, wow, what an interpretation. So which is that first kingdom? Oh, Sifa, that first kingdom is Babylon. And then the interpretation will continue again. There shall rise a second kingdom, and this kingdom shall be inferior to yours, and it is represented by silver. Who knows what silver represented? Who knows what silver represented? Who knows what is... Yes? Yes, Sifa? Silver re I know, teacher Betty. It's made of Persia. That's correct. And the interpretation continues again. There shall be a third kingdom, and this third kingdom shall rule over all the earth. And it is represented by bronze. Who knows what bronze represented? Bronze represented Greece. That's correct. Then lastly, there shall be a fourth kingdom. And this kingdom shall be as strong as iron. And in as much as iron breaks to pieces and scatters everywhere, and like iron that crashes, this kingdom shall break to pieces and crush all the others. And remember the feet that were made of iron and clay? This kingdom shall be divided, but it shall still have the strength of iron in it. Now, do you understand? But, Sir Betty, I don't understand which kingdom was divided. Does that mean there's a fourth and fifth kingdom? Let me help you, Joseph. That fourth and fifth kingdom represented the Roman Empire from the beginning from the beginning up to the end and up to now. So do you now understand, Joseph? Oh, I now understand. The great God made known to the king what will come to pass after his great rule. The interpretation is sure and the dream is certain. That's very correct. correct. Well done, boys and girls, for the good job. Now, children, what do we learn from this story? Now, Daniel was not scared and he said in his heart, I will go and show the king that there is a God in heaven who can interpret his dream and show him the meaning. If Daniel was scared, many people would not have known about the God of heaven and his mighty power. So children, Daniel was known as the spokesman for God, and that is how all of you should be. People should see you, and they should know that you are children of God, and that you are servants of God, and that is why you are proud to speak about Jesus. Now, children, what have you learned? What have you learned, Chichi? Yes, children, wherever you are, be it in school, at home, in the field, or just with your friends, be bold, be brave, be proud to speak of God, to be a Christian in the presence of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And what about you, Sifa? I have learned that wherever we are, God is with us. Joshua chapter 1, verse 9. Amen. What about you, Joseph? I have learned we are trying to do the right thing, but no one else is by your side. Always remember, God is by your side and will never leave you. Dare to be a Daniel, dare to stand alone. Dare to have a purpose found, dare to make it known. Joseph, please pray for us. Let us pray. Let us pray. Thank God. Yes. Make everyone online, our online viewers, and everyone here to have a good day and a good life. I pray for COVID-19 stop spreading and the cure to be found. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen. That's all for today, children. Until next time. Bye. Bye. Calvary, 
Jesus is very near. Hello, 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 boys and girls. Welcome to another exciting segment where we're going to see God's work in full display. Our theme this week is I will go. Our theme verse comes from Joshua chapter 1 verse 9, which says, Do not be afraid, do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Our scientists today are Maria Muma, Raphael Mamba, Baraka Maranga, and I'm Jerry Siaki. An egg is a very delicate grocery item. When your guardian sends you to the kiosk or farm to buy or get eggs, they always tell you to be careful. If not, you can easily break it. Today's job is to protect the egg. The egg is not as weak as we assume. Who wants to bet they can crack walnuts more easily than a raw hen's egg? Take a slightly smooth egg, place it on your hand as a precaution in a plastic bag, and press it as hard you, as you can. Did it break? No, it did not break. It didn't break, the egg is still here. Why? This is because when I press an egg like this, the pressure from my fingers is evenly distributed over the curved surface of an egg. Now we know that curved, surface are, curved surfaces are very, very stable. And we take advantage of this principle when we design things like cars, when we, when we design things like planes, when we design bridges, and arches in the buildings. Now, my, assign, my assistants and I were tasked to protect an egg. Now, while I did, we each came up with ingenious ways from around the house of protecting the egg. Remember, boys and girls, want to not do the experiment without informing guardian and getting permission. Okay, so what did we use? We used ordinary things from around the house like raw eggs, we used some straws, we also used some tape, oh, some popcorn as well, some cotton wool, and styrofoam. Now, each one of them came up with a very interesting way of protecting the egg. Who wants to go first? Who will show us their craft first? Me. Okay, Baraka. But before Baraka goes, let's see what happens. This is real. That's a raw egg. Oh, smashed. So, show us how well you can protect your egg. What uh, did you use, Baraka? I used straws, tape, and a uh, egg. An egg. Okay. Let's see. Higher. Right. So drop it. Higher. Okay, drop it. Did it break? Oh, this one is intact. Okay, who will go next? Me. Yes, Raphael. What did you use, Raphael? I used some popcorn, a plastic bag, and I used some tape. Okay. So let's see. it break? Let me open and check. But it looks intact. So that seems to have worked. And who goes next? It's you. And what did you use? I used cotton and styrofoam. How did you do that? I took cotton and 
placed it inside the styrofoam and then poured it out and then put the, uh, the egg. Excellent. Now let's see. Egg is intact. Good protection. Now, boys and girls, the egg here represents you and I, human beings. The drop represents the spiritual journey that we are all taking. Just like the egg, we are all vulnerable to trials and temptations. We rely on the mercies of God, our creator, our protector, our sustainer. Without him, we cannot do a thing. As we do God's work, which is, go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you to. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen. Remember, you can do it alone because it is like into battle without no armor. Just like the egg without any protection, you will not survive. The armor you need should be full. You know why? Because with only one part of the armor, you'll be vulnerable to many trials and temptations. Just like the egg we tried to protect, but still broke. Therefore... Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. Stand therefore, having guarded your ways to truth and having put on the breastplate of righteousness. And having showed your feet the, and having showed your feet the preparation of the gospel of peace, Above it, taking the shield of faith, with which you will be able to quench all the fairy darts of the wicked one. And put on the and put on the helmet of salvation and the spirit sword, which is the word of God. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. And for me, those words spoken may be given to me, that I may, speak, I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel of peace, for which I am an ambassador in chains, that in it I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. Just like the protected egg, you will be able to stand in the evil day. And just like our fathers of faith, Daniel, Paul, David, Jonah, Jeremiah, and Noah, I will go. Just like our mothers, Rebecca, Esther, Lydia, Deborah, Priscilla, I will go. We, we will, will go. go. Will, will you? Days are filled with sorrow and care, hearts are lonely and rare. Burdens are lifted as Calvary, Jesus is very near. Burdens are lifted as Calvary, Calvary. Jesus is very near. Until next time, bye. Fine. Good evening, Shabura. I hope yesterday you enjoyed the lesson. Yes, and something good is that yesterday I didn't sleep late. You didn't sleep late. Yeah. So definitely you remember what we learned about yesterday. Yes. But today we are going to go straight to see 
what happens when the seven last plagues are poured upon the earth by the seven angels who have the seven bowls of the wrath of God. Oh yes, you've just reminded me. Yesterday while I was reading Revelation, it's becoming my favorite book in the Bible. It's my favorite. Wow. Um, as I was reading Revelation chapter 16, um, the seven plagues were there, and the first one was souls. So, like boils, but I read again that these boils only came to people who had the mark of the beast. I don't understand. And it told me again that these souls were hard to be, hard to be treated. Why? Now, because this is a punishment from God, remember we, agree, we, we discussed yesterday that plagues are, uh, are afflictions which are, which are considered as a punishment from God. Remember, because the children of Israel had refused to allow, uh, the children of Egypt had refused to allow the people of Israel to go and worship God, God punished Egypt by sending ten plagues. This time, because the children of this world and the powers of this world will have stopped the people of God from buying and selling, and they will also say that they will be killed if they will not obey the ways of this world, God punishes them by sending the seven last plagues. Now, that last pl the, the, the first plague we read from the book of Revelation, chapter 16, in verse number 1, John heard a voice from heaven, and the voice from heaven said to the seven angels, Go out to the earth and pour your seven bowls, which have the last wrath of God. And they went out. In verse number 2, we are told about the first plague. But before we read, I want us to pray. Let us pray. Our kind and loving Father in heaven, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the gift of life. Lord, now as we want to start our prophecy nuggets, please help us and protect us. For it is in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Now, Revelation chapter 16, verse number 2, the Bible tells us that the first angel went and poured out his bowl of God's wrath upon the earth. And there fell upon men a noisome and grievous sore, or there fell upon men a sore that was difficult to treat and it was very painful. And the Bible says it fell upon the people who had the mark of the beast and the people who worshipped the beast. Only those are the people who are afflicted. No, 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 no. You're making me to laugh. Why? You told me on the first day, revelation is the future. Right now, we can treat a lot of diseases. In the future, there'll be more medicines which will be able to treat more dangerous diseases. Why are you saying this little source? Source are little to the world nowadays. Yes, but remember, this is a judgment from God. And God wants to prove to all the world, including angels, God wants to prove that he is in control of everything, even the destiny of man. Even the life of man is in the hands of God. Do you remember when God allowed Job to be tempted by the devil? Yes. Do you remember in the book of Job chapter 2, verse number 7, the Bible says that Job was afflicted with sores from the tip of his foot to the crown of his head. He was afflicted with sores all over his body. They were like boils that they could not be treated. Wow. Because God had allowed it, God is able to set the limits. God is the one who gives men wisdom to treat diseases. But this time, because they have disobeyed God, God shows them who is in charge. Truly, God is powerful. But, um, I 
read people who of the who people the people who had the mark of the beast and who worshipped uh, the beast's image. But um, I read again in chapter 15 that there were a lot of people who were following Jesus. Yes, the people who follow Jesus don't get the source. Now the promises that Jesus has given his people start working. There is a great promise that is found in the book of Psalms, chapter 91, verse 9 and 10. Psalms, chapter 91, verse 9 and 10 says, David says, Because you have made my, the God who is my refuge, even the Most High, because you have made him your habitation, or because you have made him your protector, no evil will fall upon you. Even the plagues will not come near your house. Why? Because you have made the God, the God your protector and you have made him your habitation or you have made him your dwelling place. He is the one who secures you. The Bible says in the book of Psalms, chapter 91, in verse number, verse number 10, the Bible says, even when the plagues will come, they will not come near your house where you live. That is what is going to protect the people of God. So the people who have the mark of the beast or the people who have been worshipping the image of the beast, they will have very, very grievous sores or very painful sores on their bodies. But nothing is going to happen to the people who worship God because God is protecting them. Okay. In Egypt, let us go back to Egypt. Yes. In Egypt, when the ten plagues were sent, the Israelites were in Egypt but in another place. But here, we are the people because um, some people have been punished. And you know, humans have this feeling for others. Where were the others? Now, it is important to know that at the end of time, there will be only two groups of people. The people who worship the true God and the people who worship the beast and have the mark and receive the mark of the beast. Only two groups in the whole world. Now, these two groups will be on the, will be on the earth but the only difference is that one is worshipping the true God, the other is not worshipping the true God. They were worshipping the beast and they are receiving the mark of the beast. Now, all these people will be upon the earth. When the ball is poured upon the earth, it is only going to fall on the people who have the mark of the beast and do worship the beast. Only. Now, when we go back to Egypt, when the first three plagues were poured, they affected all the people. When, they, when, when Moses threw up his rod upon the ground and it turned into a serpent, and when the, when the magicians also threw their rods, they also turned into serpents and everyone witnessed. When the water was turned into blood, the Bible says, all the waters of Egypt were turned into blood. But this, the seven last plagues in Egypt did not affect the children of Israel who dwelt at a place called Goshen. They were separated because of their dwelling. But this time, God who is mighty, God who is able to do everything, even though they live together, is able to protect his people. That is why the promise says again, because you have made the God who is my refuge and the most high, you have made him your habitation, no evil shall come upon you and no plague shall even come near your dwelling place. God has promised and we are waiting for him to see how he protects us. Again, you mentioned that because there is so much medical advancement, 
in those days, even though they have, even though they have a vaccine, but vaccines cannot treat those plagues. Why? Because they are as a result of the wrath of God. Wow. But isn't God gracious? I ask once again. Why is God doing this? And in Egypt, they were separated. Here, there were good people. Weren't there some good people who remained on earth? Yes, everyone is on earth. And even when the plagues are being sent, everyone is on earth. The people who worship the true God are being protected by God's promises. Tomorrow we will see two plagues which will destroy all the sources of water and will turn the sources of water into blood. But the people who worship the true God will get fresh water because God is able to provide. Again, the people who have the souls are the people who don't worship God. But the servants of God and the faithful people who trust in God, God will protect them. So it is important, dear children, that we will learn to trust in God and to obey his word so that when God's judgment fall upon the earth, we will be safe and we will be secure because God is going to shield us and is going to protect us. With that, we will pray. Please pray again. Okay, children. As always, we put our hands together, we bow down our head, and we close our eyes and let us pray. Our kind and loving Father in heaven, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the gift of life. Lord, now as we want, we have, we have just finished our uh, prophecy nuggets. Please help us to always come and I hope we have learned something. Lord, help us to take these lessons we have learned to our lives and uh, help, help the lessons we have learned to help us. For it is in Jesus' mighty name, let us all say amen. Amen. Dear children, remember to read Revelation chapter 16, verse 3, 4, and 5 for tomorrow's prophecy nugget. Goodbye. See you tomorrow. Bye. Meeting 2021. I will go. I will go. Come meeting 2021. Welcome children to our praise junction. Before we continue, we'd like to say hello to our friends.
כמה מילים ציניים שלא נופל לי שום פעם שם בבלסטים
you children for joining us today. Thank you children for joining us today. Thank you children for joining us today. Uh, welcome for tomorrow's welcome for tomorrow's interesting program at from 1:30 p.m. Jesus Jesus wants us to let his light shine. Good evening, boys and girls. Thank you once again for that beautiful singing. That was awesome. That was awesome. Um, we are going to pray. But before we pray, remember, I like reminding people why I love popcorn and why I love popcorn. That's why. Um, I love popcorn because it reminds me that very soon Jesus will come and the trumpet will sound and the dead in Christ will pop out of their graves like popcorn. <laughs> Who's ready to pop with me? Are we ready? I can see people are ready to pop. Some are standing and they're raising their hands. They're not ready to pop. Sit down and pop with me. I'm waiting. All right. I will count to three. I won't joke today. We're just going to count to three. Are you ready? Are you ready? One. Two. Pop! Yes! The dead in Christ shall pop out of their graves when the trumpet is sound, and I cannot wait for that day to come. Um, we are going to pray, and on, Ma on Sunday, we learned in English, and Devele, Jesus loves me. Devele, Uchesu, Uyani, Tanda, Shona, Jesu, Ano, Lida. Today we're going to learn <laughs> Luganda. Let me see if I can say it right. Yesu kwagala. Yeah, 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 yeah. They'll correct me. Kwagala nyo. Kwagala. Yesu kwagala nyo. Ugandans, I'm sorry if I messed it up. You correct me again tomorrow. Our heads are bowed. Our eyes are closed. Pray with me, dear Jesus. Thank you for loving me, 
for dying on the cross for my sins. Forgive me and help me always to do that which puts a smile on your face. Amen. On, on Sunday, we learned about, yes, on Saturday, we learned about Elijah, the fastest man in the Bible. I believe he was the fastest because he ran faster than horses. And yesterday, we learned about crazy times, crazy... Uh, Elma. Crazy times, crazy... Yes, crazy times, crazy friends. Today... Today we're going to learn about frog sandwiches. Frog, frog sandwiches. Frog, frog what? How many have ever eaten frogs here? Your parents fried frogs for you for breakfast or lunch? No? You've never eaten a frog sandwich? What is a frog in Swahili? Chura. Hakuna munda mekula chura namkati. Really? <laughs> in the Bible. In the Bible, there are people who ate frog sandwiches. I told you, every story I tell you, every story I tell you is from the Bible. So turn your Bibles to Exodus chapter 8. I want to thank the prophecy team. They spoke about the plagues. Today I'm talking about my favorite plague. My favorite plague is plague number two. Plague number two. Now, when you get to Exodus chapter 8, are you there? If you are there, say amen, Pastor Tuba. If you are not there, say have mercy, Pastor Tuba. Uh, oh, my thing, come with your Bible. All right. The second, the, the, the second plague is my favorite plague. It says, and the Lord said to Moses, go to Pharaoh and, and say to him, that says the Lord, let my people go that they may save me. But if you refuse to let them go, I will smite all the territory with, with what? With frogs. So the rivers shall bring forth frogs abundantly. They shall go up, come up upon your house, in your bedroom, on your bed, in your houses of your servants, on your people, into your ovens, into your knitting bowls, and the frogs shall come upon you and the people and your servants. Now, let me tell you something, boys and girls. God has a sense of humor. Do you know why God used frogs? The people in Egypt used to worship a god called Hepek. Heket. Heket was a god who was half frog and half, half, half woman. So because they used to worship frogs, it was illegal in Egypt to step on a frog. If you stepped on a frog, they would arrest you. You'd go to jail. Now imagine when they ask you, eh, uh -huh, why are, you, why are you coming from jail? You see, I stepped on a frog. Not because you stole something, but because you stepped on a chura. So people would get arrested for stepping on frogs in, 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 in those days because a frog was holy in Egypt. So God was laughing at the Egyptians for worshipping a frog. Can a frog answer your prayers? Can a frog answer your prayers? So God made fun of them and made sure there were frogs everywhere. Now, I want you to close your eyes. Let's watch the movie together. Are your eyes are closed. Very good. Frogs are everywhere. There are 20 frogs in front of you, green and orange frogs. You enter your, bread, your bedroom. You try to enter into your blanket. You enter your blanket. There are 15 frogs in your blanket. You run away to the sitting room, you try to sit down. There are three frogs on the chair, three green ones, and they're making that noise. Grip, grip, grip. Not only are there frogs on the chair, you're like, ah, let me go to the toilet. You try to go to the toilet, you're trying to sit on the toilet. There are frogs coming out of the toilet chamber. And then you are trying to eat your ugali and sukuma. As you are eating your sukuma, you feel something in your mouth and you pull it out. It's a leg's frog. It's a frog's leg. I'm sorry. It's a frog's leg. Why? Because when mommy was cutting the sukuma, my mistake was frogs are green. Ah. She cut a frog. And by mistake, she cut a frog and, she, and you ate it by mistake. So I believe on that day, because frogs were everywhere, even people ate frog sandwiches. Don't you think so? 
Don't you think someone made a mistake when they were making a sandwich and then they put a frog in the middle? And when the boy was now in school, uh, there was a frog inside. Now, boys and girls, if you read the story, it says the frogs were where? The frogs were everywhere, on their beds, in their toilets, everywhere, in the kitchen, in the sitting room, everywhere there were frogs. Now, now if, if, if you were the pharaoh, if you were the pharaoh, now the frogs are everywhere, they're in your bed, they're in the bathroom, they're everywhere, you're trying to sleep, they're frogs. And can you imagine a thousand frogs singing in your house? What, what sound do the frogs make? Now imagine a thousand frogs singing like that in your house. Ah! So they must have been annoying. Now I can imagine people in Egypt when they were walking, they were trying to avoid stepping on a frog. And if anyone walked and fell, they would fall on a frog. Oh! And the frog would be in their mouth. Oh! I'm trying to help you imagine how crazy it was with the frog. Now I have a question for you. If you were the pharaoh and you were asked, Mr. Pharaoh, when do you want the frogs to leave your kingdom? What would you say? Betty, what did you say? Today or tomorrow? Tomorrow? Today. What about you? What did you say? Say, 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 right? Hey, open your Bibles while reading our last verse for today. We'll continue this sermon tomorrow because of time. In verse, in verse Exodus chapter 8, verse 9 and 10, it says, And Moses said to Pharaoh, Accept the honor. When do you want these frogs to leave you from your houses, that you may, they may remain in the river only? And the Pharaoh said, Tomorrow. He wanted to stay one more day with the frogs. Can you imagine one more day with the frogs? Just one more day. Would you want one more day with the frogs in your toilet, in your bedroom, in your bathroom, in the bus, in the matatu, in your father's car, everywhere, even in your mother's handbag? Ay, 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 in mommy's handbag. Ah. Now, boys and girls, guess what? Some of us in this room, we love frogs. Ah. Can I tell you what your frogs are? Some of us have got darling frogs. We love our frogs very, very much. Let me tell you what your frogs are. Can I tell you what your frogs are? I can tell you. I hear some of you like cheating in class or lying. Some of you never tell the truth. It's very hard for you to tell the truth. That is your darling frog, your darling sin. If I told, stop lying, like, ah, ah, me, I'll stop lying. I'll stop lying tomorrow. I just want to lie. One more time. Is it true? Okay, I have one last question to ask you. Do you have a favorite sin? A favorite sin, something you love doing. You know Jesus doesn't like it, but you like doing it. Do you know that sin that you like doing when mommy is not looking, when dad is not looking? Hey, you know it, huh? Ma Let me tell you what my favorite sin was when I was a child. My favorite sin was stealing Milo and sugar and eating it. And then it would taste so good. But it's still in good. It's still in good. What is your favorite? Don't tell me, don't tell me. If Jesus comes today, if Jesus comes today, if Jesus comes today, and you are planning to stop lying tomorrow, you stop to, to let go of your darling frog tomorrow, do you think you go to heaven today? Do you think you go to heaven today? How many of us have got darling frogs, our favorite sins? I have a favorite sin also. I know I'm a pastor, but I think I have a favorite sin somewhere. How many of us have got favorite sins? A sin that you like doing. Someone is even eating in church right now. That is not right, Elma and friends. Aya. Ha. Ah. What is your favorite sin? Don't tell me. Tell Jesus. I want us from today onwards to ask Jesus to help us to let go of our darling frogs. Our darling? Our darling? Because when Jesus comes, in Matthew chapter 25, verse 41, he says, the fire of hell is made for the devil and his angels. But if you are still holding on to your darling frog, Jesus will want to burn that sin. But because you are holding on to the sin, what will happen to you? You will be burnt along with the, with, the, with the sin or with the frog. In this last minute, I just want us to sing our... Yes, she's there. People who belong to Jesus, 
always do what Jesus wants them to do. Amen? Amen? How many are saying from, the, from today onwards they don't want to have frogs in their lives? Those darling sins. They want to stop those darling sins. Jesus wants they want. I see. Jesus can see your hands. Very good, very good, very good. Jesus will help you. Uh, Acts chapter 3 verse 19 says repent and 1 John chapter 1 verse 9 says if you confess your sins Jesus is faithful and just to forgive you. We'll sing a song and then we'll pray. I am yours Lord. You remember it? I am yours Lord. We'll just sing it through once. I am yours Lord. You are mine. I'm your car. Your love, I'm your candle. You make me shine. I am yours, Lord. You are mine. Your heads are bowed. Your eyes are closed. You made a promise today that you ask Jesus to help you, not to sin and to let go of your darling sins. Let us pray. Our dear Jesus, we are so sorry for loving frogs in our lives. There are these amazing sandwiches that we think are sweet, but when you come, Lord God Almighty, you will burn the frogs. And if we're holding on to those darling sins and those darling frogs, we will not make it to heaven. Each and every one of us here, King Jesus, want to pop and spend eternity with you when you come. So please help us today, from today onwards, to let go of our darling frogs, our darling sins, and to hold on to you forever and ever until you come to take us to eternity. Please keep us faithful, keep us loving you. We pray all this in your mighty name. Amen. God bless you. Have a lovely, lovely evening.